Hello all, my name is Paladin. Sorry I've been away for so long. We have bar exams and uh, and law school to worry about. Anyway, we're going to look at how to create a tanker that's going to go out, mine sorium, and then come back to base automatically, and then go back out again on its own. It's not too complicated, and you can see that we're building this uh, this tribal fuel harvester. Uh, one of the key things is, of course, having enough fuel storage to line up with your needs. You want it to go out for a long enough time, so make sure your deployment time is matched up with how much you're harvesting. And here we're going to go for one year. And the target is to harvest all the soria in one year and return to base and then go out again. Now, deployment time has us at five years so it's going to go out to this gas giant and then for five after five years is done just bring it back to base so it can recover its morale uh, that's if you're going to role play it of course uh, otherwise uh, you can just keep it out there for as long as you want but for uh, you hardcore players who'd like to role play and i absolutely encourage that do it that way so every five years they can return to base so make sure you have enough sorium harvesters for what you'd like to do. Make sure your engines are precisely what you want because you don't want to burn up all that fuel in one go. So make sure you have good fuel efficient engines. Uh, by fuel efficient, I mean make them as big as you possibly can and give them a small amount of power when you design the technology. All right, I think that's all we need to do here. So please note that I'm cheating right now a little bit. Um, what I'm doing right now is just building these tribal harvesters. Uh, I'm probably just going to build one, but I would like you to know, like, you have to build the ship. This order of battle is just to speed things up for the purposes, of course, of this tutorial. All right, so the first thing that you have to do is set up appropriate orders for your task group. So we come down here to the primary and go ahead and look for, let's see, where is that guy? Move to gas giant that has sorium in it. All right. Uh, one of the things I forgot to do, you need to mark it as tanker. All right. It doesn't really work if uh, you don't mark his tanker I always forget let's move on fuel tanks full all right as soon as the fuel tanks are full it's going to override your primary order and then it's going to unload all your fuel back at the colony and then go right back out again so what's going to happen is that this uh, fuel harvester is going to go out to the the gas giant with the most accessibility on its sorium. So 0 0.7, 0 0.3, all right, and Neptune, we have it at accessibility one. So that harvester is gonna go out on its own to Neptune. Now we have to wait a little bit because uh, the conditional order, it, it was built with full fuel, so we just need to wait a second, but you can see right there, it's moving to the sorium site at Neptune on its plot and move. So we'll center the map on it, minimize that. Well, let's just watch it go on out there. I'll speed up the time, but I found this highly rewarding. Passengers on on the port side, you can see the Comet Cromelin, which is also known as Comet Pons, Kogia, Winnek, and Forbes. It's also on the starboard side, we flew by Uranus, but here we are. We're coming up to Neptune. One massive thing I should have mentioned earlier in the tutorial is being sure that 10% of your fuel can make it all the way up to, say, Neptune or whatever the, the gas giant is. So you want to be sure which gas giant your guys are going to go to by judging its accessibility. If you have a tie, I think you'll go to the one with the uh, biggest uh, amount of sorium. So I'm obviously going to speed up a little bit, 30 days, just so we can watch it come back. All right, so harvester tanks are 90% full. 
Uh, it will come back when it's absolutely full, but the game will give you a, a heads up when you're at over 90% full in case you wanted to uh, go off and do something. Uh, we got NPR action. We'll speed up that. I should have created a time bubble. All right, so here we have our conditional order. It's going to start moving back here, so we'll just go ahead and watch that. And that's how you do it, ladies and gentlemen. There it is. All right, and for my next trick, we're going to go ahead and start looking at how to make a base, a star base of some sort, and then how to get the base out there using a tug ship. So we'll go ahead and create that right now. So first things first, what we need to do, and what I've been asked to do, is make an asteroid miner base. So something like the movie Io, with Sean Connery in it. So what we're going to do is put together this orbital habitat with asteroid miners. And we're going to have 10, um, what are they called? Asteroid mining modules here. We're going to put together 10 of those. And we have the orbital habitat, so we're going to have about 50,000 people on this thing. So it's a pretty massive uh, victory class orbital habitat. But we're also going to put some recreational facilities on it, just so the deployment time doesn't hit us. And besides, that's just good role playing. Okay, I'm going to speed up the video playback, just so I can take care of some housekeeping matters. So one second. For your own reference, I'm building the Victory Orbital Habitat in its own uh, own task group so that we can easily manage it. Then I'm going to decide where to deploy this asteroid mining facility. I do want to mention that the Orbital Habitat does not need to have any cargo bays inside it. That's because the minerals that it will mine will go to the planet stockpile. So yeah, you do need to make a colony here. All right, let's go ahead and put together that tug ship here. I'll slow it down. So what we need to do is first off, get the ship to ship tractor beam. That's the whole reason for a uh, tug ship. So you'll have to research that technology there. Uh, we're gonna up the deployment time just a hint and we'll give it a lot of engines. The engines will combine with the other thing that it's tugging, and then it's going to combine the masses of the two, and then calculate the speed from there. So having a pretty fast tug is important. It'll get there uh, sooner, but then you'll want some speed once it attaches to the big thing, and the, our Victory Orbital Habitat was in the ballpark of 400,000 tons. So be sure that you have enough engines to get wherever you need to go pretty quickly. All right, let's go ahead and create that tug and put it in, uh, let's just put it in the battle task group just because we're gonna make our own and we'll add it and separate it. You click on it, hit the attach, and it'll make its own task group. Then we'll click task groups here. All right, find the orbital habitat. And then you'll see right here, tractor specified ship and it'll add it to it. So now those two will be linked up. Now what we'll do is find the comet that we're going to, and we want to release the tractor chips. Unlike terraformers, you don't have to do a move order. Just go to the place and release the tractor chips. I'll speed it up. Okay, now that we're here, we're going to go ahead and look at the populations. Go to the Mining Maintenance tab, and you can see we have 10 orbital mining modules. So there you go. A lot of work to get 10 up there, but you, we can do the same with terraforming bases. We can do the same with pretty much anything else. You just build that tug ship, you attach it using the specified ship, and then you release it at whatever point you'd like. So that's how you do that. I do want to mention, let's go back to Earth here. You can go your industry. And you can build the orbital habitat right here under the build PDC orbital habitat. You can use it through industry, but you can also use your shipyards to build the same thing, provided you have enough space, of course. So there you go. That's how you 
build the uh, orbital habitat, you build the tug ship, you attach the tug ship to that orbital habitat, and then you release it at a specified point. There you go. I hope you enjoyed. Good luck out there, Space Cadet. This is Paladin signing off.